بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم The topic is how to write a vascular Doppler report. Now the vascular Doppler includes carotids, peripheral Doppler of the upper limb, lower limb, and each limb having venous and arterial Doppler, and then is the abdominal Doppler. We are not including the gynecological or obstetrical Doppler report in this discussion. The structure of the report includes the title means the heading. We can write that it is carotid Doppler report or carotid study report or color Doppler study of carotids or report of color Doppler study of carotids or we can say neck vessels Doppler study report or scanning report. So any of these headings can be taken as title of our report. The second thing is patient identification, demographics, if you want to mention the date, the area from where the patient belongs, the recipients and provider details. In modern setups, we take details of the patient and we issue computerized ID number to the patient. And sometimes that small bar sticker is attached with the report or it is printed out with the report. And once anyone scans that bar, can get the details of the patient, which includes the name, date of birth, any national ID, the area or address of the patient, age of the patient, gender of the patient, and if required, either married or not. Address includes the city also. It also gives the details of the referral, either the patient was inpatient in our hospital or outpatient or was referred from other clinic or other hospital. If from any other clinic, we can get the details and mention in the report about the doctor and hospital. We can add one line of indications like history and clinical information. For characters, for instance, We can have a patient having history of vertigo or headache. We will look for any clinical information like the blood pressure, pulse rate, and other required clinical details. We can write down that at our report within one line. We can also mention if any clinical diagnosis is given. Then is technique and procedural description. Whenever required, we can say that we are using linear transducer. We can mention its frequency. 
if required we can mention the name of the machine and the technique we are using if there are variable or different techniques for any procedure then are the findings the findings can be of different pattern i mean the findings can be described in the report in different styles there are people who are giving reports their findings in the form of paragraph and there are some centers they just give worksheets on which they just label the diagrams at the worksheet i prefer to have a combination of both if there is a worksheet at the back of your report and you type your report on the other side on the front side the report must have at least five parts the first part is like here we have described the title patient identification and details indications techniques my report will be comprising of these four will be comprising of five parts the first part will be having these four points the point number 1 2 3 and 4 my report second part will be having findings and that findings will be divided into three parts first is the findings on gray scale the findings on color doppler and findings on spectral doppler then the last part of my report will be impression or conclusion and i will add up the worksheet and then at the end the name of the person who is scanning in the hospital details are given so we will have a paper on back of which a worksheet is already printed for different structures for instance for abdomen abdominal vascular for carotids for upper limb arteries and veins and for lower limb arteries and veins so we will have four types of worksheets printed in letter heads on the back of the letter head on the front we have letter head of the hospital or clinic having our details and sometimes if we just have one radiologist who is scanning we can put the name on the letter head this is how will be the paper on the front hospital clinic details address phone number email everything and doctor's details and we give the title that it is for instance carotid doppler scan report or neck vessel scanning report and then we give three headings three paragraphs gray scale description longitudinally and transversely scan then second paragraph color doppler findings longitudinally transversely 
third paragraph spectral doppler giving the peak systolic velocities and diastolic velocities ratios etc then the last part is conclusion and then on the back the same information which we have provided in the front page in our report we will just mark the findings if we have got any findings there and in the table we will write down the velocities or ratios whatever is required in case of carotids whereas in upper lower limb we measure the peak systolic velocity and, di and diastolic along with that we prefer to have resistive index also but if we just stick to the peak systolic velocity we can serve the minimum requirements First is carotid Doppler reporting. For instance, in carotids, we will assess the carot common carotid artery, external carotid artery, and internal carotid artery. We will take peak systolic velocities and, di and diastolic velocities of these three vessels. We can compare all three vessels of right side with each other of left side with each other and then with the contralateral side i mean the findings of three vessels the peak systolic velocities and, di and diastolic velocities of right side with the left side or vice versa the peak systolic velocity of internal carotid artery if it is normal ranges from 45 to 125 centimeters per second we try to keep the angle less than 60 degrees and keep in mind once we are scanning the uh, once we are scanning any vessel and we want to get the peak systolic velocity the velocities are depending upon the angle so we have to keep the angle same in all vessels of both sides in addition to internal carotid artery external carotid artery and common carotid we will also assess the vertebral artery and subclavian artery If here is an example patient details prescural ultrasound report for carotids here we have measured the external carotid artery peak systolic and, and diastolic then three parts of internal carotid artery bulb of the cca then the common carotid artery proximal mid and distal then subclavian icacca the thing deficient in this chart is the vertebral artery and here we have the diagrammatic description it is the common carotid then the internal and external carotid external has got branches so that's why we will have access to the external carotid at its origin from the bulb at the bifurcation that's why we take just one reading whereas for internal carotid we can take three measurements you also take three measurements from external carotid. 
we have to mention the waveform either it is integrate and the resistance either it is low resistance or high resistance for instance here when we see that internal carotid artery mid is showing 311 peak systolic velocity whereas on the right side it is 101 so it is almost 2.5 to 2.8 times the resistance here is increased 55 whereas here it was 14 so resistance is increased means there is stenosis in the ICA mid part increasing the velocity the other things are within the limit of 15 which we have just discussed that if the difference in these vessels or the contralateral side is within 15 centimeter per second that is taken to be normal but we have to keep the same angle and assess all these vessels on both sides now this report says that although it is anti-grade but in the mid ICA there is high velocity and the resistance is increased it means in the mid ICA there will be a plaque in this diagram they have shown it in the bulb uh, which is a mistake it must be the plaque is somewhere here in the mid of the internal carotid so in this area this black area must be drawn here other important thing is when we describe these are the descriptions which i just mentioned that we need to give this description on the front but if you want to have a chart worksheet like this you can also give that details on here but it will be very congested detail so report must be very clear and well written so that everybody can understand this is right vessels the right carotid system is normal and free of black there is no stenosis noted in the right ICA the CCA has no evidence of hemodynamically significant stenosis there is no evidence of stenosis in the ECA and there is normal anti-grade flow in the vertebral artery the left vessel this one the left mid internal carotid has a moderate grade severely irregularly surfaced heterogeneous and calcified plaque it means it is a chronic plaque 15 mm in length this will be the length distributed anteriorly resulting in 90 percent area reduction it means the area reduction if total area is one centimeter so 0.9 centimeter is reduced is covered by the plaque this is showing its area in the which can be assessed while measuring transversely by trace method or by percentage method there is a subtotal occlusion noted in the left ICA the CCA has no evidence hemodynamically significant stenosis there is no evidence of stenosis in the ECA there is normal anti-grade flow in the vertebral artery this is another simple report having some deficiencies but sometimes people can report in this way giving all patient and clinic details and flow charts they write report like this saying grayscale imaging intima media thickness atheroma or other findings then doppler measurements of cca ica ica and diastolic ica cca ratios and ECA peak systolic velocity. In this report, they have not taken the mid, distal, and proximal parts of ICCA, ICA, and CCA. 
but here they have also mentioned the vertebral artery, its flow direction, the waveform. Then comes the upper limb peripheral Doppler reporting. We know that in the upper extremity we have arteries and veins. The subclavian vein will be along with the artery, then is the axillary vein. We will have axillary artery with it, the basalic vein, the phallic vein are the superficial veins. Then from the axillary artery is uh, an axillary vein, we get the brachial artery and brachial vein respectively. Then comes the ulnar artery and vein here, and then will be the radial artery and vein. The segmental pressure, once we measure the pressure, we will get such type of waveforms, like we had the, the pressure, the segmental pressure at different parts, at axilla, at the cubital fossa, at wrist, and then at fingers, index finger. In upper extremity arterial duplex scan, it is similar. We can divide it into the same five parts, the details of the patient and the person who is scanning or the clinic. Then we give the handing, like here we have given the upper extremity arterial duplex report. The second part will be the grayscale, then is color Doppler details and spectral Doppler details. Either it is arterial venous, these will remain same. And better to divide them in paragraphs. So report will have three paragraphs describing the findings which we got through grayscale, color Doppler and spectral Doppler. It doesn't matter either it is carotid or peripheral scanning or in the peripheral it is artery or venous. And the last part is usually the comments or conclusion. This is a worksheet having a diagram of right and left upper limb. The right subclavian, right axillary, right brachial, right radial, right ulnar, and then are the left. It is mentioned to give the peak systolic velocities for these arteries and tick the type of physicity we are getting, either it is triphasic, biphasic or monophasic. We know that This is triphasic, this is biphasic high resistance, this is biphasic low resistance, this is monophasic. Then we will mention the right proximal art blood pressure right distal arm similarly left and we take the ratios also and then we give the comments
Then we come to the lower limb peripheral Doppler reporting. We know we scan for the common femoral artery and vein, deep femoral artery and vein, saphenous, great saphenous vein. We have the superficial femoral artery. Then we have the superficial femoral vein, which is the femoral vein of thigh. Uh, then we come to the popliteal artery and vein, anterior tibial artery and vein. The artery is continuous as dorsal spedis artery. We scan it. And then we have the peroneal and posterior tibials. This is showing the limb anatomy from the groin. Here is the area for the great saphenous vein the saphenofemoral junction, very common for thrombosis or occlusion. This is the common femoral vein. So it is on both sides, which gives us the deep femoral vein and superficial femoral vein, the, which is also called the femoral vein of the thigh. And then we get the popliteal at the knee crease, which is giving us anteriorly interior tibia. This is the anterior tibial and posteriorly we have tibioperoneal trunk which gives us posterior tibial and peroneals. Usually we have one artery with two veins with these names. This is the segmental blood pressure of these vessels. A different level. Uh, we measure the segmental blood pressure and brachial index. These are the areas where we scan at groin for the common femoral, then the superficial femoral and the bifurcation and the femoral. Then we have superficial femoral at its lower part then going posteriorly for popliteal these are for supine position and prone position in prone we prefer to assess the calf vessels and popliteal again <clears throat> this is the bar chart which i was discussing for patient details and that bar sticker is attached which gives detail this, this is a sample from university of washington medical center vascular diagnostic service the lower extremity arterial duplex uh, we can put black or red color wherever we have stenosis or occlusion and this is for arteries uh, here we can mention the peak systolic velocities right and left side this is the ankle or arm this is the tibial posterior tibial interior tibial peroneal so we can assess them compared with the brachial this is for history and then impressions here we can give three short paragraphs and then conclusion for venous duplex scan this diagram is helpful here you can see the common femoral vein and great saphenous vein, the junction. This is the great saphenous. Here it is coming downwards, and we have the femoral vein and small saphenous vein entering into the popliteal vein. This was great saphenous vein. And then we have this small saphenous vein 
the main popliteal vein then giving us two tributaries the anterior and posterior this is the anterior and tibioperoneal trunk having two parts the peroneal and posterior tibia another example a specimen for lower extremity venous examination preliminary report we will put the sign symptoms or history right and left side for spontaneous flow of then phasic flow augmentation wall salva compressibility and then along with the vessels we give their details another specimen for right and left side assessing the vessels their diameter and reflux and looking for the perforators the three, three type of perforators and then is the cockets all three and dvt negative positive not evaluated and its details this is specifically for venous insufficiency worksheet the patient can have varicose for which we scan for the venous system look for the varices the diameter of the vessels and very important are the perforators perforators are the channels which are between the superficial veins and d veins so it is skin these are the superficial and d one perforators we have got valves in the perforators as well as in the superficial and d veins so once the valves are incompetent or the perforators are occluded or having incompetent valves we can have reversal of the flow from the deep to the superficial which can cause dilatation of the veins resulting in varicose vein another specimen for assessment the cephalofemoral junction here we can assess these vessels this is the femoral here is the junction d means any insufficiency or obstruction seen we will just take it and for these vessels we can put the details the size and reflux and this is also for that then giving details of the patient then giving conclusion another specimen for lower extremity venous for dvt evaluation this is the competent by compression augmentation technique spontaneous phasic non pulse style and dvt if present superficial vessels evaluated if not evaluated take it if evaluated thrombus noted or not and give the details here we give the right and left leg details this is another specimen uh, which is usually used in most of the centers for lower extremity venous this is from a specimen for dialysis assess the duplex arterial and venous mapping in which we assess the brachial artery proximal mid distal radial artery and the cephalic and basilic if required the base line of the radial and ulnar required for the dialysis another specimen for reporting <coughs> labeling it and giving summary 
solial veins or posterior tibial vein non occlusive thrombus is seen in the posterior tibial veins its size its length and far from the distance from any landmark patient has previous history of dvt non thrombophilia patient is on treatment anticoagulants so this is the progress report for abdominal vessels we look for all the vessels like the mesenteric the renal celiac superior mesenteric inferior mesenteric uh, then the iliacs the common iliacs internal and external iliacs the most important are the portal vein mesenteric vessels and renal vessels we look for any stenosis in them and the same criteria is used to assess on gray scale color doppler and spectra doppler and give the comparisons here along with peak systolic velocity and end diastolic velocity we also assess the resistive index this was a short discussion about reporting for vascular studies thank you very much